नमस्कार ऑनरेबल गवर्नर स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान परम आदरणीय श्री कलराज मिश्रा जी हिज प्रेजेंस हियर हैज बीन वन ऑफ अनलाइटनमेंट इन द लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी ऑन अर्थ होम टू वन सिक्स ऑफ ह्यूमनिटी देर आर नॉट मनी हु कैन मैच इज एक्सपीरियंस एक्सपोजर एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन he has had the occasion to be in both houses of parliament and in uttar pradesh assembly and council on the executive side he has contributed as a senior minister in uttar pradesh and central government he has held positions in organization of great significance his holding position of governor state of rajasthan is an honor not to him but to, but to the chair he occupies we are grateful sir for your enlightened wisdom you have in great detail given out the entire scenario and i am sure you have given us enough food for thought you will guide us motivate us and inspire us we wish you many years of good health and public life working shri om birla honorable speaker lok sabha it's a unique and rare honor when you become a speaker of the largest democracy on the planet and mother of democracy but over the years in spite of political bickerings shri om birla has found place in the heart of parliamentarians he devised innovative mechanism to ensure every member of parliament takes to the floor where there have been occasions toughness was called for Shri Om Birla ji took recourse to persuasive mechanism only. He has contributed at a global level also. He has visited several countries, and it was heartening for me as vice president to know that some of the global leaders reflected about him in a very very glowing manner. his presence here and is being part of the system is a boon to us his age is on his side his vision his execution i have seen a chairman rajya sabha a man of simple habits but very effective and firm when it comes to changing the mechanism and that is why i would not stress you all much on the first subject shri birla ji has in great detail reflected on digital aspects and technological empowerment of representatives to help the people at large he doesn't look legislature through political prism in that sense we are lucky to have a speaker who has statesman like approach Dr CP Joshi is another gem in the jewel he has enormous capability to distance the two things politics and the job of a speaker when he wears one hat of a speaker he doesn't look through political prism and therefore he has become somewhat a role model by holding several functions in the state legislature which were normally beyond contemplation given the highly divisive politics we have in the country but his love for his area is reflected every time 
उदयपुर एंड नाथवारा नाथवारा आर नेवर आउट ऑफ हिज माइंड श्री सतीश मैना आई हैव हैड द इकेजन टू बी मेंबर लोकसभा इन 1989 पर द नंबर ऑफ मंथ्स आई स्पेंट इन लोकसभा मिस्टर मैना हैज स्पेंट ट्वाइस दैट नंबर इन टर्म्स ऑफ इयर्स इन द लेजिस्लेचर मोर देन थ्री डिकेट्स a legislator in continuity but what stands out about him is and what will be a matter of pride for every speaker here every deputy speaker every chairman of a council and both for mr bidla and myself he has shown his toughness that bureaucracy cannot take legislatures lightly a matter that was pending for nearly two decades little less than two decades he decided he decided very firmly and he decided with a soft heart i would appeal to everyone to read his judgment when for breach of privilege he convicted some officials by convicting them he reinforced the supremacy of legislature he did not show weakness it is our bounden duty to enforce respect for legislature which means respect for the people at large he punished them symbolically but effectively that judgment i am sure everyone here would like to go through cpa chairperson yan granger i have not known him personally for long i have had interaction with him only recently but my connect with cpa goes back to more than 3 decades when i was a minister in delhi a junior minister and of course younger person at that point of time so i was a facilitator for organizing cpa in delhi i know the importance of cpa and therefore his presence here would mean a lot to us i would take the occasion here to indicate to him that cpa is a very functional body representation is one part of it but in the cpa secretariat there is need to have greater participation of human resource from one sixth of humanity that will help the cpa secretariat that will generate good vibes and i am sure a man at his senior level would look into it mr sayam loda he is secretary cpa energetic person i know him for long will not take the risk of saying more about him but the best for him is yet to come we have friends three members of parliament i must acknowledge their presence here Sri Rajiv Shukla is a very senior member of Rajya Sabha, very senior. I am grateful to him in particular because I requested him that, given his seniority and given the presence of CPA chairperson, his participation would add value to the proceedings. We have Swata Dev, a lady member of Rajya Sabha. who glory glorified the institution by being an extremely effective woman chairperson i'm sure she would gain a lot here we have sri uday pratap ji from lok sabha a man from madhya pradesh friends legislatures cannot function unless we have a spinally strong secretariat and lok sabha in particular is fortunate to have a very experienced man sri utpal kumar singh a senior is officer is an extremely committed man devoted to his job we have mr rajit punami his secretary rajya sabha a senior is officer equally committed to his job i greet the honorable speakers 
deputy speakers, members of the Secretariat, honorable ministers of the state government, and distinguished guests on this significant occasion. Friends, it gives me immense pleasure to address this distinguished gathering at the conclusion of two day and very fruitful deliberations as I could make out. This ninth Commonwealth Parliamentary Association India Region Conference. And this is being held in the city of Lex. I'm sure you all would have had very soothing, comfortable time here. We all are aware CPA India region is dedicated to safeguarding the bedrock principles of democracy and advancing the values that its parent association tirelessly strives to uphold. The world knows us and very well we are mother of democracy. We are the largest democracy. We are home to one-sixth of humanity. And our democracy is unique in the world because Bharat has constitutionally structured democracy at the village level, at the panchayat level, at the Jila Parishad level, at the state level, and at the central level. This platform offers us unique and unparalleled opportunity to engage in in-depth deliberations concerning the critical challenges that currently beset legislatures and the nation. Friends, one of the two themes of the conference has great topical relevance. It's of contemporaneous, contemporaneous bearing it is staring us in our face. It is writing on the wall. That has to be addressed. It can no longer be delayed. And that is a role of public representatives in strengthening the nation through democratic institutions. I congratulate the CPA Secretariat for having chosen this subject for deliberation by those who are supreme stakeholders in performance of legislatures and their output. I am sure deliberations would have been rewarding experience, both on the technological aspect as also the second part, for all the participants. Friends, every legislator as a representative of the people bears constitutional and moral responsibility to vigorously endeavor to find tangible and meaningful resolution to address challenges faced by the people. This is the expectation. When people elect legislators, their representatives, to represent them in the theater of legislature, they have a lot of expectations. Time has come when we need to engage and to reality check. Are we really coming up to their expectations? Public representatives are supposed to be role models for the people. They are expected to exemplify conduct, which is worth emulation by others. When we look within, when we ponder and reflect, we find a worrisome scenario we have to take note of the ground reality. Friends, I am saying with pain and a deep sense of responsibility. Be in no doubt, there should be no doubt at all. The institution of public representatives is under severe strain. The reputation, their conduct, their contribution is under severe strain. The temples of democracy meant for dialogue, deliberation, debate, and discussion are these days because of the legislators, legislators represented the people, hotbeds of disturbance and disruption. As a consequence of such unwholesome 
scenario, parliament and legislatures are fast surging into irrelevance. Think within. When legislature meets, parliament meets, who is bothered? What is the space occupied? What is the perception generated? Only disruption and disturbance or by court or unruly conduct gets supported. This gruesome situation elogers for democratic values. It is paramount role of public representatives to ensure executive accountability and fiscal discipline in governance. Public representatives represent the public in the most important theater. They have the power to generate accountability of the executive, of the government. They have to get into the job of securing fiscal prudence. Are we doing that? Surely we can. Surely we must. Surely that is the obligation of our oath. But that unfortunately is not happening. Friends, remember, executive in the country is having lofty accomplishments. Highway infrastructure, rail, road, connectivity, great projects, digital penetration in the villages, great job. Judiciary is equally performing. But how about legislature? The third most important and the most important wing of governance, we have to see. We are far from giving delivery to the people or performing the way we should have. Political intoxication of the people by distribution of largesse requires serious deliberation. What we see all around, look at the advertisements, look at the performance of state governments, look at how public exchequer is being channelized. Who has to check it? It doesn't require one to be a great economist. That your finances must majorly go for capital expenditure. You have to empower human resource. You have to reach their mind and heart for capacity building. As against this, you are reaching their pocket. That is something which legislatures have to think about it. This political intoxication of reaching out to the pocket of the people by greasing their palms or their pockets may be a short-term success story. But for the nation, a long-term damage. And we have in the world countries that have been bled because of such kind of situations. Luckily, our governance is very effective and economic macro parameters are under control. But who has to think about it? People have entrusted this thinking job to representatives. If they don't do it, things will be in difficult shape. We must acknowledge, and I say it with great pain, a dysfunctional legislature has the potential to undermine democratic values and would impede blossoming of democracy. If legislature doesn't work, who gets advantage? The government. Who gets reprieve? The bureaucrat. If legislature doesn't function, which means the representatives don't get the opportunity to mold policy, to raise issues, this is absolutely something which must engage our thought process. In any democracy, parliamentary sovereignty is inviolable. 
of all the organizations, executive, judiciary, and legislature. Legislature is supreme. We have made legislature vulnerable. We have made it vulnerable because we have refused to vindicate our oath. We have not focused on our duties. We have taken our job very lightly. The people present in this room have the capacity to motivate, generate a feeling, an ecosystem whereby all legislators understand the damage they are doing by engaging into conduct which is not expected of them. For success of democracy, I have no doubt, legislature, executive, judiciary must act in harmony, must act in tandem and togetherness. But parliament alone, legislature alone, is the repository of the will of the people through its representatives. But we are damaging our spine. We are turning out to be spinally so weak that we cannot even make a point and incursions are taking place that is not healthy for governance. I appeal to every legislator to think within, reason out with his or her party. You cannot act in a manner by damaging your spine. You will be bedridden. Effective and protective legislature functioning is the safest guarantee to blossoming of democratic values. Imagine if legislatures function without disruption, without disturbance, debates take place. Surely we will have better laws. The Honorable Speaker was right on the dot. We make law and people don't know about it for years because laws are passed without participation. I had the great pain and anguish in telling people when you walk out of a parliamentary theater, Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha or Assembly, you are not walking out from theater. You are walking out from your duty. You are walking out from your obligations. You are betraying the trust of the people. Your role as trustee of the people is coming to an end. And you have no reason to know why you are walking out. Recurrent disruptions that result in squandering of valuable parliamentary hours must prompt us to introspect at least now as a collective body. The parliament missed the mark in living up to its profound constitutional responsibilities. Disorder in the temples of democracy these days has become the new norm. It's been taken for granted that the entire session will be washed. Take for instance Manipur. In Lok Sabha where Honorable Speaker presides, the Honorable Home Minister extensively gave everything to the people at large about Manipur. The Honorable Prime Minister gave everything extensively at a micro level. But in Rajya Sabha, he was the first one on 20th of July to agree for a discussion. This didn't fructify till the end. Time for everyone to think why the House of Elders, the upper house, the house that is in continuation unlike Lok Sabha, could not debate, discuss. Why? An answer will baffle all of us. At this occasion, friends, I recollect what Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said. I quote, unless we in Parliament realize our responsibilities, architect of the Constitution. For a good three years, he worked in the Constituent Assembly. And he says, unless we in Parliament realize our responsibilities and shoulder the task of looking after the welfare of and good of the people, I have not the slightest doubt in my mind 
that this parliament will be treated by people outside with utter contempt, unquote. This is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar said. We have proved him to be prophetic. People have no respect for us. People have respect for executive. It is performing. It is delivering. It is giving you gas connections. It is giving you highways. It is giving you airports. It is giving you toilets. It is giving you null. Gel in every null. They are doing work. What are we doing? Let us engage into self-audit so that we know where we are. Friends, we are now faced with grim reality. Let us all pledge to be alive to these prophetic concerns by architect of the Constitution and cautions of the founding fathers of our Republic and retrieve the cliff-hanging situation. We are clinging. We are about to lose grip. If parliamentarians representing the people don't occupy public space in parliament, other people will occupy outside. A representative is under constitutional oath, others are not. That surely can't be a situation we are imagining. Honorable members, a poignant question that heavily weighs on my mind is this. When members fritter away the invaluable opportunity to engage in robust debate and hold the government accountable, is this, where does the blame truly lie? Who do I blame? A chairman Rajya Sabha or Mr. Bidla as Speaker of Lok Sabha? Is it on individual members, their political parties or the broader political coalitions to which they pledge their allegiance? Now, when I talk to individual members, they are best of human resource. They won't debate. I don't know what happens when they come into the house. Everything evaporates, which means they are unable to convince their political masters and bosses that do not come in the way of discharge of our constitutional duties. Politics is important. You play the politics the way you want. But you cannot pl play politics all the time. You cannot have political specs every time. Issues con concerning the nation are concern of everyone, the ruling and the opposition. Now, we as presiding officers, what do we do? We face a grim situation. I faced a chairman Rajasabha. For every indecorous act, for every behavior which people will not approve, every behavior which goes against the rule, they have a past precedent that it was done in 2011, it was done in 1997. We must decide today what is wrong is wrong, what is indecorous is indecorous. We shall not sanctify a wrong because such a wrong had taken place earlier in that regime. The world is changing, India is rising, our rise is unstoppable. We are the fifth largest economy on the globe. We have beaten our erstwhile colonial rulers for centuries. They ruled us for centuries. We'll be the third largest economy by turn of the decade. Global bodies are hinting India is a favorite destination of investment and opportunity. In this scenario, how can we be in our own chains? Friends, I firmly believe the government and the opposition play indispensable roles within the framework of parliamentary democracy. 
the synergy between the government and the opposition is pivotal. Why it is missing? Are we here to, in legislature, to score brownie points? No. Our motto has to be to serve the people at large. We are far distanced from that wholesome activity. A parliament where government and opposition work in tandem is always in the interest of the nation. Every legislator takes his place in the, that chamber. He becomes part of history. He becomes a glorified citizen. I fail to understand after getting such embellishment, such a great honor, where you become part of history. The only achievement is non-performance, poor performance, indecorous behavior. This is more menacing than COVID. Time we find a solution to this. Those who used to advise India a few decades ago are seeking our advice. Because we as a nation of reason, Indian genius is impacting global corporates. They are contributing to global economy. And we as legislators have to introspect, reflect, and make amends. We have in India a promising tra trajectory of growth. It is incremental. All elements, the world is envying us. The world is stunned. All major economies are suffering. Our country is not suffering. I can tell you by way of illustration, 46% of digital transactions in the world in 2022 were from India. Our digital transactions were four times that of USA, UK, France, and Germany taken together. Our per capita data consumption of internet was more than that of USA and China taken together. Our people are performing. We see the change. What I could not visualize or dream as a member of parliament in 1989 is a ground reality. I could never imagine that Swas Bharat Abhiyan, toilet in every home, water in every tap in every home, electricity in every household, connectivity in every village will take place. It has taken place in my lifetime. We would have done much better if legislators, public representatives were accountable to their oath, accountable to the people, they acted as trustee of the people rather than being in bondage. And that bondage, friends, is not democratic. It takes a sense out of democratic values. What is the prime role of the opposition? The opposition functions through public representatives, where not on the street, we sometimes they do. They have to do it on the floor of the house, parliament or legislature. They have to generate accountability, transparency. That can't be done if you walk out of the house. I would appeal to everyone, those particularly present here, to think and make the institution efficacious, effective, penetrating, and result-oriented. Critic critiquing the government is job of the opposition. And that can take place only on the floor of the house. That opportunity is being missed. There are several issues which we need to debate in the house. Ours is a country that has robust judicial system. Access to judicial system is of the highest quality. Recent events have shown it. 
But whenever someone is visited with a notice, they take to streets. I, from this platform, appeal to our younger people. Time has come for them. They are the greatest stakeholders of governance in this country. Their future is at stake. They are the foot soldiers of Bharat at 2047. They must exercise their judgment, discretion, and option to ensure their representatives fall in line. They will have to take this call. I have no doubt the kind of ecosystem that is emerging in the country. Bharat at 240 at 247, when it celebrates centenary of its independence, will be at peak. Yadi agar itne bade havan mein, itne bade yek ke andar, har koi apni hauti de raha hai, par wo hauti nahi de rahe hain, jinka param kartavya hai, jinke liye aushek hai, wo janta ke prati apni vafadari dikhaye. A single member parliament or legislator, by proper functioning in legislature and parliament, can put the government on the mat. That's the time. When I look at the parliament history, I go to the boot camp. I go to the Sashad Dal. There was a lot of people. But the political system was so strong. One one person asked a question. He was ready. He was ready. अपनी बात कहता था बात का असर होता था जनता के अंदर एक भावना जागृत होती थी और एक समुद्र बन जाता था वो सब पता नहीं बातें कहां गई आज के दिन आपसी बर्ताव आक्रोशपूर्ण हो गया है जब देश में सब कुछ ठीक चल रहा है वी डोंट हैव टू एग्री टू एवरीथिंग अंडर द सन वी कैन एग्री टू डिस but then we have gone much beyond that. Friends, our constitution provides freedom of speech. But legislators have a unique freedom. Anything which they, they say on the floor of the parliament or legislature, 140 crore janta bhi मुकदमा नहीं कर सकती न दीवानी मुकदमा कर सकती है न फौजदारी मुकदमा कर सकती है इतना बड़ा अधिकार मिलता है लेजिस्लेटर को कि विधानसभा या सदन के अंदर कुछ भी कहे मुकदमा नहीं होगा पर यह बेलगाम बात नहीं है यह गंभीर विषय है आप इसका दुरुपयोग नहीं कर सकते इसका दुरुपयोग यदि होता है तो सबसे ज्यादा जिम्मेवारी उन लोगों पर है जो यहां बैठे हैं वी कांट बी मर्सीफुल देन वी आर प्रोटेक्टर्स 140 करोड़ लोगों की हिफाजत हम करेंगे हम ये इजाजत नहीं दे सकते कि अनर्गल बात गलत बात तथ्यहीन बात तथ्य से परे बात आप तुरंत कह दो और अकाउंटेबिलिटी नहीं लो ये चिंतन का विषय है इस पर मंथन करना चाहिए जरूर अच्छा निष्कर्ष निकलेगा फ्रेंड्स द डिस्कशन ओवर दीज टू डेज आई एम श्योर मस्ट हैव बीन वेरी अनलाइटनिंग एंड यू विल टेक होम मच होमवर्क आल्सो। वन माह में राज्यपाल राजस्थान इस क्षेत्र के बहुत बड़े अनुभवी हैं, विषम पिता मैं हैं, इनके मुकाबले के बहुत कम देश में हैं, इन्होंने भावुक तरीके से अपनी बातें कही हैं। मैं कुछ बातें खुलकर कह रहा हूं आपने वो बातें दबे दबी जबान में कही है पर कोई शंका नहीं रखी है समय बीतता जा रहा है देश के लिए नहीं समय बीतता जा रहा है पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव के लिए कि वो कितना खड़ा उतरता है वो कितना योगदान कर पाता है या वो पार्लियामेंट और संसदीय व्यवस्था के ऊपर इतना कोटाराघात करता है कि जनता का उसमें विश्वास नहीं है और मुद्दे 
संसद में नहीं संसदीय व्यवस्था में नहीं इसके बाहर तय होंगे यह हमारे लिए एक अच्छी बात नहीं है मुझे समझ में नहीं आता और सामान्य आदमी को भी नहीं आता इसमें कोई बहुत विद्वान होने की आवश्यकता नहीं है मैं विद्वान बिल्कुल नहीं हूं हम बातचीत से दूर कैसे हट सकते हैं हम डायलॉग डेलीब्रेशन डिस्कशन डिबेट से नफरत कैसे कर सकते हैं दूसरे की बात सुनने का मतलब यह थोड़ी है कि उसकी बात मान ली गई है पर ऐसे कंपार्टमेंटलाइजेशन हो गया है कि बात ही नहीं सुनेंगे यह मैं हालात जब भी सदन चलता है रोज देखता हूं मुझे बड़ी पीड़ा होती है लोग मुझे कहते हैं वी नेवर थॉट इंडिया विल हैव अ मैकेनिज्म विच विल बी ट्रांसपेरेंट अकाउंटेबल मैं आप सबको पूछता हूं पावर कॉरिडोर्स के अंदर पावर ब्रोकर्स थे कहां गए और पावर कॉरिडोर्स हैव बीन फुल्ली सैनिटाइज ऑफ दीज मिनेसिंग पावर ब्रोकर्स नो वन कैन लिवरेज डिसीजन दीज डेज ऐसी परिस्थिति में हम क्यों और आगे बढ़ने का काम नहीं करें यदि अगर पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ठान ले तो इसमें कोई शंका नहीं है मुझे आई नो डाउट भारत की सलांग और भी ज्यादा तीव्र हो जाएगी छोटे मोटे राजनीतिक फायदे के लिए तथ्यों से अलग भटकर देश की संस्थाओं को कलंकित करने की प्रवृत्ति है मैं कुछ की बात नहीं कर रहा उस पर सोचना चाहिए आपको आश्चर्य होगा दुनिया के किसी भी देश के विद्यार्थी विदेश में हैं, उनके प्रोफेसर विदेश में हैं, शिवाय भारत के और कोई देश के नागरिक अपने देश की मैं बहुत गलत शब्द यूज कर रहा हूं ऐसी तरह नहीं करते ऐसा क्यों हो रहा है फ्रेंड्स आई हैव टेकन इनफ टाइम इन कंक्लूजन आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माय हार्ट फिल ग्रेटिट्यूड टू द पार्टिसिपेंट्स स्पीकर्स एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हु कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू द रिचनेस ऑफ डिस्कशंस एंड इनसाइट्स इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस द कलेक्टिव डेडिकेशन टू स्ट्रेंथिंग डेमोक्रेटिक प्रिंसिपल्स एंड गवर्नेंस इज अ टेस्टमेंट टू द unwavering commitment to the well-being and progress of our nation let us collectively endeavor to create a brighter and more prosperous future for all i will leave you with dr b r m bedkar's observations and i quote i will say nothing after this dr b r m bedkar said i quote the constitution can only provide the organ of the state such as the legislature the executive and the judiciary the factors on which the working of those organs of the state depend are the people and the political parties i leave you with this thought i am grateful to dr c p joshi for affording me this valuable opportunity to be in city of lex a great place and to share my thoughts with those each of whom is nerve center epicenter of big change thank you so much